If you notice the life of Jesus, when he came, every step he took was to fulfill a prophecy that was written about him in the scriptures. That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 6 and 7, it says, I have come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do your will. So everything about your life is written in a book. That book is with God, but that book has also been handed over to you as the Bible. Everything you will ever become is in the scriptures. And whatever you are pursuing, there was someone that was pursued it in the Bible. If you are trusting God for a child, we have stories of people in the Bible that trusted God for children. One even lived up to 90 years before she gave birth to a child. That's why Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. If it is marriage you are trusting God for, there were people who trusted God for marriage, like Ruth and God settled them. The Bible said, for whatever things were written before, were written for our learning so that we can learn. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So those things were written so that you can learn and have hope. When your hope is dying out, you need to pick a scripture that carries a situation like yours, that ended well. Read through it so that you can have hope concerning what you're going through. So before you came, God wrote everything about you, then he sent you and said, start living. He finished your story before you started the story. That's why in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The difference between you and an unbeliever is that the unbeliever's story does not have a happy ending. So when you give your life to Christ, your story is rewritten and then you end well. That is why the Bible says, mark the righteous man, his end shall be peace. But the Bible said, there shall be no peace for the wicked. So the one that does not know Jesus, his story does not have a happy ending. It doesn't matter how he's prospering. His end is not well. But a believer, one who knows Jesus, has a happy ending. There are scriptures that God has designed for you. You, you personally. How to know that those scriptures are for you and those things are written about you. Whenever you read or you hear someone read them, you are moved in your spirit. Something happens to you. There are a few scriptures when you mention for me, I feel like rolling on the floor. In fact, even if I don't know where to read in the Bible, there are scriptures that are on my head. I rush to them every day. I read them more than 50 times, close to 100 times. Read over and over and over and over and over because I feel they are talking to me directly. There are scriptures that are written concerning you. For example, John the Baptist. The Bible says, when he came, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What was he quoting? The scripture concerning himself in Isaiah 40 verse 3 to 5. The guy came from Isaiah. What book are you coming from? There is a scripture that is talking about you. There is a scripture you can claim. Oh my God. So when John came, he said, I am the voice. He said, that scripture you are written in Isaiah 40, I'm the one. Look at that boldness. So when Jesus came, he also said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He was quoting Isaiah 61. When Paul came, he said, I am sending you as a light to the Gentiles. He was quoting Isaiah 49. What scripture have you found concerning yourself? Sometimes when I read Isaiah, I, I feel as if I'm the one that God is speaking about. No. I have raised up one from the north and he shall come from the rising of the sun. The rising of the sun means from the east. From the east. I said, so I am the one coming from northeast. This is my own scripture. Which one is your own? Find your own scripture and sit on it. When Jesus came, he was quoting a scripture. Which scripture have you found concerning your calling? So Jesus opened the scriptures and showed them things that were written about himself. Listen, when you find the scripture, you find yourself. When Jesus went into the temple, he found the place. Oh my God. Look for verse 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he opened the book. He found the place where it was written. You must open the book to find the place. Nobody will do the finding for you. You are the one to find the place. That is talking about your healing. That is talking about your riches. If there's anything I want you to be greedy about, is the scriptures. Uh, be selfish about it. If I were you, I would even tell my neighbor that this message is not for you, it's for me personally. Anything you want to be meaningful in this life is in the scriptures. You want to go into clothes business. We have a woman in the Bible. The Bible says that she was selling purple materials. Lydia. She was a seller of purple materials. If it is in leadership, we have Solomon. If it is wisdom, we have Solomon. If it is writing, we have Solomon. <laughs> if it is singing, we have David. You have a role model in the scripture. If it is father and parenting, you have, oh my God, you have a lot of them in the scriptures. Some of you, it, it can just be a verse. One particular verse. If you can find that verse, you don't have a. Revelation chapter 10, 
verse 1. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand. Your book has already been opened. Verse 8. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is opened in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. Go and take the book. The scriptures concerning your life have been opened. Go and take them. Go, take the little book that is open. That little scripture, go and take it. No matter how little, it can change your life. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said, to me take and eat it you need to take and eat the scripture sit on it for weeks and it will make your stomach bitter but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth to make your stomach bitter means it will stir you up when you truly find the scripture talking about you you cannot sit down sometimes when you are reading you jump sometimes you just ah so mean ruminate on it sit over the scripture meditate on it day and night Next verse. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. And it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. Then he say, and he said to me, you must now prophesy about many people's nations, tongues, and kings. After he had finished it, he said, you can meet kings now. You can go to nations now. You can meet many people now. You can have followership now. If you can eat this scripture, you will talk to kings. You will talk to nations. You will talk to peoples. You will talk to people of different color, different ethnic groups, different nationality, different race. Shout hallelujah.